Hey, hi everyone, this is Vivek and in this particular video, we're going to be talking about this problem, no escaping. This is the first video of the Code Forces Weekly and we're going to be continuing the whole series as we have been doing for Ad Coder and Lead Code. So the rules remains the same that go ahead and comment on to this video that what you have learned after moving throughout this problem, right? So we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff in this problem. And this is from 766 Div 2 round. This was a E, which was like one of the possible problems. The next one was fairly difficult. So this, if you could have solved this problem in contest, you would have got a decently great uh, rating jump. Let's have a look at what this problem talks about and how we can solve this particular problem. So Major Ram is being chased by his enemy Raghav. Ram reaches the top of the building to escape a helicopter. The building is on fire. Ram must choose optimal path to reach the to minimum health. So over here we are losing health and we want to lose the minimum amount of health. I comma J is there. There is an N floor and M rooms. There are K ladders. And it's from AI comma B AI comma BI to CI comma DI. So there are two coordinates to endpoint of the ladders. And it's guaranteed that A of I is less than C of I, right? So it's a single direction movement and it's guaranteed that A of I less than C of I. And Ram also gains H of I health if he uses the ladder. Okay. So there is some like health gain when he uses the ladder. Nice. If Ram is on IS floor, he can move in either direction, but it's the if he moves from this same floor to same floor in J2K, the absolute difference multiplied by X of I. What is this X of I? Um, X of I is given for the n different floors. It makes sense. So every floor has its own multiplier on the distance that he moves. And he's starting from 1, 1, escapes at n, m. Uh, if, no if not possible, so no escape or else print the minimum amount of health Ram loses. So he starts with some amount of health. What is the minimum loss in the health? So we want to minimize the loss, right? Okay, cool. Uh, test cases are there. That's too much. So most probably some n m needs to be small. n and m both are 10 to power 5. Is there a constraint on n into m? Mm, nope. We don't seem to have a constraint on n into m. The k is up to 10 to power 5, which means um, it's going to be, there are going to be 10 to power 5 ladders and the dimensions of this matrix is also 10 to power 5 plus 10 to power 5. So that's pretty large. I mean, 10 to the power 5 plus 10 to the power 5 means uh, the whole of matrix is pretty large. Every floor has a multiplier and then ladders are given and its increment health point is given. So one thing that I can note over here is that you can move in a single floor in any direction and that kind of is governed by this decrement in health point. So you will not keep moving in a single floor. And then uh, you can only go up in the ladders, right? Because A of I is less than C of I. So you only go up from A of I comma B of I to C of I comma D of I. So you always go up using ladders. Make sense? And NMK obviously does not exit 10 to power 5 because then the input itself will be very large, right? So there is this test case. You have to clear off the graph and then kind of use it again. For the matrix. Graph seems pretty natural to me for this particular setup because there is A of I comma B of I to C of I comma D of I. Uh, this is their optimal 1 comma n to n comma. Cool. So there are a bunch of inputs. There are these paths given. I think the question itself is clear. We don't really need to go into samples. You can go ahead and check with the samples, but I think uh, I got, kind of got the idea of how this works. So this particular problem I seem seems to be like having a, a larger constraint on N and M and that can be the first point which can be confusing, but I feel that we don't really need all the points on every floor, right? We don't need the whole matrix. So now that's almost about the reading constraints. I think I've got the fair amount of idea of what they are. So let's move into kind of discussing. So we know that there is this steps. Number one, read. Number two, understand or observe basically. Or solve. And then the third is formulate, right? So these are the things that we're going to do in this problem. So reading part is done. Uh, we have fair amount of idea and then we need to observe and solve the problem. So let's have a think about how do we solve this problem. So what I can think of is that for a particular floor, like there is this floor on which let's say there are these three places. So let's say this is some, this is let's say the ith floor and then this is a point a point b point c. So I can kind of go from this to this, this to this, anything in any particular way. And it's going to be the distance like a i minus b of i multiplied by x of i, right? So there is an intra floor movement. So the movements that are given to us is intra floor. There is an intra floor movement. And it kind of decreases health. So 
दिस इज कॉस्टली राइट एंड देन देर आर फ्यू फाइंड ऑफ मूवमेंट वेर यू हैव ए कॉमा बी एंड देन यू कैन गो अप टू सम सी कॉमा डी राइट फॉर यूजिंग अ लार्डर एंड दिस गिव्स यू अ प्लस हेल्थ राइट देर इज अ इंक्रीमेंट इन हेल्थ ओके एंड देर इज अ माइनस ऑफ दिस ऑन द हेल्थ makes sense so naturally this particular problem seems to me like a graph problem where we have to kind of go through different things and we want to find out the optimal health so i think there are multiple possible solutions using dp also i think it should it should be feasible because everything every ladder goes up but um, i think graph would be a natural choice to do this so let's try, i will try to explain this particular problem in a graph setup i'm going to so this is actually a problem of something called state space formulation in graph state space formulation problem of graphs okay wherein you are given a real world model and you have to model it in a graph right one neat thing about this problem is that every a comma b cannot be used so first thing that we try to observe is that what are the interesting points right so if we have a big kind of grid over here where we are kind of starting off at 1 comma 1 and we want to reach n comma m right something like this so one thing that we can think of is the point where we start the point where we want to end and for every ladder maybe something like this so what we can think of is maybe like first of all every ladders end points are the interesting points and do we ever want to like we if we start moving from any particular point including the starting ending and the ladder end points we will never like stop in between right because there is no point in uh, like stopping at a floors room which has no ladder to it or nothing to it right there is absolutely no point so the movements are only going to be in the same floor from end points of ladders or it's going to be across fl floors using the ladders right so the total amount of interesting points is just going to be 2k because the number of ladders is k so two end points plus two which is going to be the like the starting and ending point so these many interesting points are there and which is around uh, like 2 to 10 to the power 5 because k was 10 to the power 5 right so uh, this seems to be natural choice for the like nodes of the graph and now we want to model this as a shortest path problem because there are these costs right where we have to increase and decrease the health right so we want to in the problem it's asked that we want to minimize the total amount of health lost right so if you move in the same floor there is a health loss right health loss and if you move across the ladder there is a health gain right so what we can try and model this is like for every floor we make some connections and across the ladders there is obviously going to be a direct be a directed connection right so let's try to think about modeling right so let's now model it so we have let's say a particular floor where there is some ladder coming to this point some ladder going up some ladder coming in some ladder going up some ladder going up like this and so on right so let's say this is some a b c d i right sorry uh, e and then the floor is i right so uh, now we if we reach this point we can go to any of the other point if we reach this point we can go to any of the other point so one way to kind of connect all of these things in the graph would be to maybe connect all pairs in this right mm yeah so one way would be to connect all pairs in this but uh, that size seems that seems to be very uh, like um, non optimal way to do why is that so because like all the k points can meet at a single floor so there it might be an order k number of like points in a single floor and then if we connect everything the number of edges would be k square and that is not something which we can do so this modeling doesn't really work well uh, what else we can think of is that like do we actually need to connect let's say we have this distance between these two which is b minus a i'm assuming that this is an increasing direction of the values of y co coordinate so this into x of i and this is nothing but c minus b into x of i right now think about this particular edge over here which is going to be c minus a into x of i now even if we don't add this particular edge over here you can go from this node to this node and then travel from this node to this this node and the sum of the total weights of the nodes are going to be equal to the no weight that you would have added right so these are like extra edges which we don't even require in this particular thing so what we can do is we can make the connections a bit more simpler so we can add only the connections that are between uh, two neighboring nodes and that should be sufficient enough to build the whole uh, structuring of a single floor so this should be d minus c into xi 
x of i and this should be equal to e minus d into x of i right so this is going to be the different cost so these are the edges that we add right why are we adding these because from these we need to go to the neighboring ones it's a bi-directional edge because we can go into both the directions and either way it costs the same right so if we just kind of write it this way you can note that fine uh, the cost of any node to any other node in the same floor is modeled correctly according to the expression given that is uh, a minus b abs the x of i you can see that for a particular floor every xi is common and a minus b into xi is what is is the edge that you keep between any two nodes this is something that we can actually use for this problem and this is what makes each floor's connection just order k on the worst case in fact order the number of endpoints on the floor right and if you sum this up across all floors the total number of endpoints are fixed so it's going to be order k right so total number of edges that you add of this kind of type is going to be order k which is fine because we can afford order k number of edges right now let's think about um, how do we model the ladders so these are positive costs right uh, and when we kind of go through them we're gonna have a decrement in health so positive means this much amount of health we have to pay but when we use ladders it's given that the health increases by h of i so if we try to model ladders in this case let's say there is this a comma b and then we go from this to c comma d then uh, we're gonna have a minus h over here or h of i whichever is given for the edge because this is going to be first of all directed and we're going to have a minus h of i because it's going to be allowing us to give get like a decre uh, increment in health so the cost to us is minus h right it's going to be health minus minus h of i that's going to be the cost so it's going to be h plus h of i the health is going to increase eventually right so that's why we keep it a negative and this is how we can set up the whole graph so the way we're going to do this is let's say I'm just gonna get, get take a sim simple example. This is the starting point. This is the ending point. And let's say there is this kind of ladder over here. There is this ladder over here, right? There is this ladder over here, and there is this ladder over here. Maybe the starting few things, right? So the way we make the connections is this: that there is this going to be this edge, okay? Then these three, I'm assuming, in this are in the same level. So make these two connections. And we make this connection and we make this connection and this connection and then we like kind of forget about uh these kind of nodes these are just like the four floor boundaries so we don't really keep them and this kind of a graph will pop up right this is what we can do and you can see that only the endpoints are the interesting point plus the two points and the connections for every floor is just between the neighboring nodes which we said is going to be at most order k and the edges of increment using the ladders is also order k so in total if you see the number of vertices is going to be equal to order k and number of edges per floor is order k per ladder is order one so number of ladder uh, edges is order k as well so in total it's order k right so in total there, these many edges are there and the ladders have sort of like minus h of i and these are the distance multiplied by the x of i of the floor that's the kind of value of this whatever the floor value for this is floor is x of floor is i right so that kind of an edge we add and this is what we connect okay now setting up this graph in this 2d format might look difficult so like when we try to formulate it up we will kind of see how we can do that but essentially this is going to be the whole logic that we can use because now if you think about the shortest like shortest path cost from over here to over here which is the start one comma one to n comma m essentially every edge is like the amount of health that you lose right so in this edge you're going to lose this much health in this you're going to gain some health and so on right so it's modeling correctly because the health decrement and increment is what you keep note that whenever you have a problem where you're modeling it with graph okay and uh, see what is being asked and the change in that is what you keep in the edge okay so for this particular problem obviously it's a weighted graph so we will use dijkstra so the complexity would turn something like order k log k kind of stuff right this kind of thing would be there I mean, obviously, k is bounded by n m as well, so you can write max of n m k and then log k and all those things. But anyways, this is sufficiently enough because everything is up to ten to power five, right? And this is how we can kind of solve this problem using graph. Uh, since the every edge is going upwards, there is going to be no negative cycle. This is one important observation in this problem that every edge is going upwards and their values are negative. But even if they have negative values, we can use Dijkstra because there is no negative cycles. Dijkstra's fail only on 
cases where you have negative cycles, right? So there is no negative cycle chances because everything is strictly increasing. Yeah. Um, we can actually try and do this with kind of um, like DP as, as well. Try Like if you want to reduce this log key kind of stuff, because what we can do is like from a single floor, we can propagate the values to the higher floors and then do a forward sweep and reverse sweep. So this kind of an idea on DP can be used, but I feel uh, it's not really required for this problem. I mean, this is very natural to think about. DP is obviously correct for this problem, but like it's not the most natural way to think about this problem. Okay. So this is there. And this is, I think most mostly what is going to be there as an observation, create the graph, prepare it like a shortest path problem and then use Dijkstra to code it up. Right. Now let's talk about formulation. So in the same slide, I'm going to talk about formulation, right? Now, obviously when we are trying to code, so this is a problem where you, where formulation part is important because when we are thinking about coding this, don't just dump into coding uh, on the terminal and then on the editor and then start writing random stuff. Think about how will you model this? So one way in which we can model this that I can think of is most probably that we can number these interesting points. So what I can do is I can put all of these points in some sort of set or map and then number them by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then create a simple like explicit graph. So we can create an explicit graph right of this particular thing because it's a 2d grid we cannot really keep it in 2d coordinates and all so in every row you can put up the points that are there sort it up and then like connect the neighboring ones that is fairly possible and then once you do that you can also like for every point you map like for every x comma y you map it to a number in the range 1 to 2k plus 2 right something like this and you create a normal graph out of it and then for every neighboring parts, you kind of connect these two. So you can put all the points in the same, in the same floor and then connect these edges. Then for any dialysis, you know, the two endpoints, so you can add an edge between them and then run a normal Dijkstra from this node to this node. So that will do the trick for you, right? So this is how you can solve this particular problem and formulate it as a Dijkstra problem. And then finally, it's going to be just a Dijkstra template to be used, right? So you can write Dijkstra, obviously like you don't really need a template for Dijkstra, you can use normal priority queue to solve the problem. But this is what you essentially do that you can encode this whole structural 2D part into a like a 1D normal kind of like explicit graph with 2K plus two nodes and put the edges according to every floor. First of all, like for every floor, you can keep a vector and then push them in the vector, sort it up and then connect them up. And then for every like ladder, you anyways have the information explicitly. You can you can create this mapping, right? Which will anyways take uh, n log k log k which is fine because anyways, the complexity is k log k. So this mapping will also cost us k log k, which is fine, right? So this is there. Right, so this is going to be the formulation of this particular problem and then rest of this is coding. So this is a really good problem to practice Dijkstra and writing codes on this. You can also look up like about a DP solution for this. I think there should be enough solution on code forces about different kinds of solution. This seems to be a DP, a DP, like there is going to be a DP solution possible, which is going to be forward and backward part. But I think this graph formulation is something which is very interesting, right? So I think that is going to be all for this particular problem. I hope that you learned something, whatever you learned, one particular thing that you found mo the most interesting that you learned on this problem is what you can kind of comment in this particular video's description. Also, if you have some like suggestions for me about these kind of videos, because these are something that we have started off new. So I would be more than happy to take these suggestions from you on the, on the comments. Okay. And after this, if you have anything that you like definitely code this particular thing, if you have any like doubts on these kind of things on how to read about these stuff, feel free to ask me questions on these, on the comments, also on the lives that happen on the weekends. And I'd be see like, I'd be answering all those things. I do, I do check all the comments as of now and do like the video to help me kind of grow this channel and reach out to more people and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the videos that are going to be in the future and press the bell icon for the live updates. Right? So a lot of people don't do that. Please do it. And see you in the next live then. Hello, that would be all. Bye-bye.